you knew the SEC was not going to take that decision lying down. And it looks like they're roaring back on a case that is being brought against Do Kwan and Terraform Labs and what the judge actually ruled, which is in stark contrast with what the judge ruled for the Ripple case. And before we get into that, just want to go over uh, just one thing. There was a story yesterday about uh, Coinbase and how they were asked to delist everything besides Bitcoin because Bitcoin is on a security. And everybody was talking about it. I personally had a lot of things going on with some other different projects that I was doing, so I couldn't cover this story. And it looked kind of odd anyhow in the beginning because I thought, how could the SEC come in there and actually say those things because it's not like they have that authority to do those. And now it comes out that that was totally false. So uh, just real quick, this is uh, not from a guy who knows a guy. This is from a Coinbase spokesperson who said the article in the Financial Times claiming that the CEO, Brian Armstrong, said the SEC had made a recommendation to halt trading in all cryptos on the Bitcoin was an inaccurate representation of the facts. Prior to litigation, the SEC did not at any point request that Coinbase to list any specific assets within the SEC acknowledges in the same article. So just be careful with the things out there. We can't go about and do our due diligence and, uh, and take a look at all these things because I don't have access to Brian Armstrong. I don't have access to Gary Gensler. I'd like to contact them, but I really can't. So for all the people that uh, talked about this story yesterday, it just wasn't true. And that's a little bit more of a bullish type of scenario. Now, let's flip the gear and take a look at some bearish type of things. So woke up today, just want to see how things were going in the old crypto market. And we can see that uh, things are pretty red across the board. And I thought, well, you know, that's just a normal healthy pullback, right? Not a big deal. Bitcoin down 1.3%. And there's some ones that have taken quite a bit of a tumble. And then this article, or this piece came out. And this is from John Reed Stark. This is his Twitter account. And this is pretty much uh, the big story today. The Southern District of New York District Judge Jed Rakoff today allowed the SEC to go forward with its case against Terraform Labs and founder Do Kwan. Judge Rakoff specifically rejected the distinction made in the Ripple case between public and institutional sales. Now, before I go on, just because one judge doesn't agree with another judge doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean that it wasn't a win, but it does give a little bit of momentum to the SEC when they go and they appeal this case, which you better believe they are going to appeal, especially when they hear things like this. So uh, to really break this down, instead of reading the tweets, I actually went to the actual decision itself. And if we pull up, I'm gonna link this in the description. You can read it for yourself. It's about 50 pages long, have fun. But this is what Judge Rockoff says. He states, it may also be mentioned that the court declines to draw a distinction between these coins based on their manner of sale, such that coins sold directly to institutional investors are considered securities and those sold through secondary market transactions to retail investors or not. What they are talking about is the basis for the judge beforehand. What they stated was because these institutional investors knew Ripple and they were under the assumption that these were actually an investment contract. When Ripple sold these directly to these hedge funds, they knew it was a security because it was an investment contract. That is not being disputed. And you can take a look at even the most uh, pro Ripple lawyers out there. That is what they're stating. The distinction between this was, was because that when, these, when XRP was actually on exchanges, Nobody knew where it was coming from. Was it coming from Ripple? Was it coming from another investor? Nobody really knew. So there wasn't really an investment contract per se. However, coming down here, Judge Racco says, however, Howie makes no such distinction between purchasers and it made good sense that it did not. And then it goes on to a ton of legal speak as far as why that is. I'm not going to go over that because it's irrelevant. I am not a lawyer, especially I don't deal with securities, so you can have at it. But really what this is going to be is it's going to be momentum for the Ripple case moving, or the Ripple, uh, or the SEC, excuse me, uh, moving forward. So that is what we have, and that could be a reason for a little bit of a tumble. It's also not a really great look for crypto in general. I still think we will win uh, the war, but these little battles, there will be ups and downs. Now let me to my next point which is there is this goofy, I shouldn't say goofy, uh, let's say a nice video that's put out by Gary Gensler and it's called 
uh, office hours. And you may have seen this on Twitter. It's quite, uh, it's, it is interesting. And he goes about and talks about these things. I'm just going to give you a quick snippet of what it all talks about right now. What do the securities laws have to do with goldfish? Great. And then he goes into some talk about how security is a little bit different and as far as crypto and everything is a security. Great. Got it. We know Gary's stance, so I'm not going to go over this. However, there's a really great video that was put out. It was called After Office Hours. And this is from uh, Stuart Alderati. I hope I said that name right. He's the chief legal officer at Ripple, over 35 years of legal experience with expertise in regulatory affairs. So this would be the gentleman who you'd want to follow. I will link his uh, Twitter handle in the description below, but they're going to give you a pretty good, accurate definition of what they believe as far as digital assets could constitute a security. So it'll give you a new wrinkle uh, into what you may already know. So just take a listen. What do digital assets have to do with orange groves, barrels filled with whiskey, payphones? Who remembers those? And beavers? Well, it turns out a lot. None of those things standing alone are securities, but any one of them can be packaged into a contract for an investment that may be a security. Huh? Let me break this down a bit. The law lists a bunch of things that are securities. That list includes things you ordinarily think of, like a share of stock. Why is a share of stock always a security? If you own a share of stock in, let's say, Apple, Apple owes you a fiduciary duty, and you can hold Apple accountable if they don't fulfill those obligations. That's true no matter how you bought the stock or who sold it to you. But the law also includes something called an investment contract in the list of things considered a security. An investment contract is not like a traditional share of stock. And anyone who tells you that well, let's just say they're trying to confuse you. Investment contracts are contracts that I sell to you with the promise that I'm going to take the money you gave me and do things to increase the value of your investment. I can take a bunch of orange groves and sell those to you. That's not an investment contract. Or I can sell you some of those orange groves as part of a larger set of promises to cultivate those groves sell the oranges and distribute the profits back to you. That's an investment contract. So orange groves alone, whether I sell them to you or you buy them on an exchange, no investment contract. The very same orange groves coupled with a promise that I sell directly to you, that I am going to work to make those orange groves profitable. That entire bundle of promises is an investment contract and therefore a security. But the orange groves alone are still just orange groves. Some would like you to think that a digital token can in and of itself be a digital asset security. It can't. Standing alone, it's just a commodity or a virtual currency. As a virtual currency, you may use it for a payment. As a commodity, you may trade it like gold or oil or pork bellies. Confused? Well, I don't blame you because some have been doing their best to confuse you for years. Because the Securities and Exchange Commission only has jurisdiction over securities, not orange groves, and they don't like that. Like a hammer, they want everything to be a nail. But the law doesn't work that way. While retail holders of crypto certainly deserve protection from bad actors, not all roads lead to the SEC. Pretending to have jurisdiction when there is none is simply a political power play. It helps no one. It hurts everyone. Remember, a token by itself, not an investment contract, despite what the SEC would have you believe. I hope that helps. So that I have to say is really good information. I recommend you watch that a couple of times just to let things sink in. And it really just goes to show you that there, in, in legal speak, in legal terms, there are so many different distinctions about what could be what, could be what, what could be this, what could be security, what could be a commodity. And I'll just leave it up to the experts. I really do wish that Gary would just focus on the exchanges and do what he's good at and just kind of 
uh, help them out so they don't rug the rest of us. Let us deal with the, the, the digital securities or let the uh, CFTC uh, deal with that actual commodities and or maybe just create a whole new organization. But uh, that's for uh, somebody way above my pay grade. Lastly, uh, before we get out of here, uh, there was uh, another unfortunate rug pull. And this was uh, covered extensively by Thitchy. And it's from or Thicky. And uh, it's something there was it to me. It's amazing how fast these rug pulls actually happen. So you have to be aware this happened in less than 24 to 48 hours. And it was it was a coin called bald and it was developed on uh, optimism on uh, the base uh, layer or base, which is the smart contract functionality uh, brought to you by uh, by Coinbase. And people thought that this bald token was actually Brian Armstrong. And within 24 hours, uh, you can see there was a bunch of, of liquidity, which was brought in by uh, the creator of Bald. And people got excited. They started to, to buy it all up. So like, oh, this is the next Pepe coin. And boom, they got rugged just like that. There's another theory that was going on around that this is actually Sam Bankman Fried, and he's trying to raise money for all his legal costs. <laughs> and the one person that really would know SPF would be Tiffany Fong. And she goes, guys, SPF hasn't had access to a normal phone or laptop since April 2023 when his bail conditions changed. He's basically been using a flip phone without internet connection and a laptop with restricted access to whitelisted websites. So again, just be careful out there because most everything is a scam. And uh, lastly, I will say this. When there are negative news, I will cover negative news. And I know people will say, like in this uh, section here, uh, Rob, uh, we had talked about this as far as curve finance as it came about because there was another rug pull or excuse me a hack and i said hey uh, curve got hacked and this is what we know and it looks like it actually was the truth uh, moving forward and somebody goes hey stop spreading fud and i'm just going to tell you like this I, I put it out pretty there pretty well there i'm tired of people lying to me i'm tired of people lying to my face coming on here so here's the thing moving forward everybody is guilty until proven innocent and that's how we're going to treat things. And this is how we've been doing this for over a year now, because we can't just let people come in here. If you're if you have a good project and you believe it actually is come on the show, I'll talk to you. The thing is, is that you're going to be scrutinized and you're going to be called a scam before anything actually happens. So when these things come out and the you know, we have some negative news, I'm going to share it with everybody. And then it's up to the project to say, no, 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 that's not true. And that's what we're going to do going forward. So anyhow, that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything's going to happen pretty fast, especially move, moving up into the actual Bitcoin having in April 2024. So subscribe to somebody, get your information from somebody you like and trust and go from there. But that's it. So like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.